Hello everyone and welcome to episode 10 of Trans Trucking Talk. Uh, in this episode we have another question from a viewer. Um, Jamie has sent in a question and she has asked, I was wondering what your thoughts are on potential relationships and how you see your future with someone being. I sometimes think that being trans has majorly decreased my chances of finding someone to be with and in a way given how easily cis males get by in life, not presenting as male has been a major sacrifice. What's your sp perspective on that? This is a fantastic question, um, and I'm looking forward to talking about it today. Uh, we're going to find a quick job as usual. I need to remember where we last left off. I think it was Yuma. We'll say it was Yuma. Uh, oh, we could drive through California to get to Kingman. Uh, I don't think we've been to Sierra Vista. That's a long job. Uh, we'll actually change this to uh, increasing route length because I don't want this to be too long. We could head back to Phoenix. We could head to Ehrenberg. Let's do this one. It's got a special trailer, uh, an articulated trailer. We'll take this one. It's just some packaged food. Uh, so we'll take that job. So we'll start off with the first part of Jamie's question where she asks about potential relationships and how I view that. Um, I'm fairly optimistic about potential relationships but and that's for a number of reasons. Um, I think for me I'm I've accepted that yes the dating pool may well have lowered significant for significantly for me um so i'm aware that that's a thing but i don't think it's significantly lowered in the places that matter um let's check nothing's coming here um and what i mean by that is um the people who would exclude and not date me because I'm trans are probably not the people I would be interested in dating anyway. Um, the, I think the fundamental, let's actually have our headlights on here, um, just the fundamental beliefs that I hold, um, that would be a bit of a red flag that they don't that just because I'm trans they don't want to date me um, and so I wouldn't want to date them and that's something that I'm it's just sort of a fact of life for me uh, let's wait for the lights here it's only just changed so it's that part in particular is not something I'm too torn up about and Sure, that category includes people who are otherwise good people who just don't want to date trans people. And, I mean, that's fine. It's... No one's forcing anyone to be attracted to people they aren't attracted to. Like, or at least I'm... Not. Um... Like... If you are attracted to women, but you... Oh, I didn't realise this was merging quite so soon. But if you are um, it's a contentious topic. You can be attracted to women and think you're not attracted to trans women. Um, although trans women might surprise you in that how, how I mean that is there are trans women who pass 100% as women 100% of the time and would never need to disclose that to anyone. So it's not something you can 100% tell. And if it really bothers you, then, I mean, I guess ask, but the majority of people aren't going to be too happy asked if they're being asked that. Um, just, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult topic. The um, a difficult thing to discuss because 
not being attracted to trans people is valid and a lot of people don't realize that they think it's inherently transphobic and it might be but there's okay that truck's stopping we didn't crash um but that's a lot in part due to societal transphobia and transphobia and being brought up and you might find in a few years time if things have moved on in society where trans people are more accepted people who would have otherwise been um, I guess exclusionary of trans people in their dating pool um, maybe they'll be more open-minded but it's not for us to tell anyone that they should be attracted to us um, But as far as dating goes, there are still plenty of people out there who do date trans people, um, not least other trans people or other non-binary people. Um, people in the LGBT community are often fairly open to the idea of dating trans people. And there are plenty of cis people who are who wouldn't bet an eyelid. Um, I have an acquaintance who um, was starting to uh, talk to a girl and he um, went on a couple of successful dates with her um, and it was progressing to a point and she told him hey I think before anything goes any further I want you to know that um, I'm trans and I transitioned years ago and um, this is where I stand now, is this going to be a problem? And he was sat with a friend at the time and um, he was like, oh, this person I've been on a date with has just texted me saying she transitioned a few years ago. Uh, and his friend was like, is that a problem for you? He And he thought about it for a second and he was like, no, and carried on with it. Um, and he's a cis guy um, so that yeah there are plenty of people who fall within the gender binary and who are cis who are perfectly fine with dating trans people it's not something that bothers them so it, it, the if you look in the right places the dating pool may not be as reduced as you think is what I'm trying to say. Um, let's just see where we're going here, and then I'll pull up the question again when we're on a bit of an easier road. Um, so, yeah, my thoughts on my future relationships. I'd like to be in a relationship. Um, whether that's a monogamous, monogamous relationship or an open relationship of some description, that's I'm happy with either, um, and I'm open to either. Um, I've talked about it before, but as far as my sexuality goes, uh, I'm generally considering myself bisexual these days, um, which. I'm generally not sexually attracted to men or masculine identifying people um, as much as I am to uh, women or femme people. That's uh, personal. It's just I don't feel attraction to them. I can't help that. It's not something I can change. It's not something I'd want to change. But um, I am, I do still consider myself pan-romantic. I can, I believe I can fall in love with anyone regardless of gender identity. Um, so I don't rule anyone out on that front. Uh, people are going very slowly up here, that's going to be frustrating. Um, so the, as far as future relationships go for me, I'm fairly open to anything. 
Um, I'm open to a romantic relationship without a sexual aspect. Um, I guess I'm open to a sexual relationship without a romantic aspect. Um, it depends on what sort of partner I find, I think. And or partners. Um, so it's... For me personally, I'm not ruling anything out. So, I'm hopeful that I'll be able to find a relationship that I'm happy in. This bus is turning here. And that I find fulfilling. Yeah, uh, whether that's emotionally, uh, romantically, sexually. It's yeah, I'm fairly open. Um, now, the, the next point I... I'm excited to touch on this point because it's, I don't think it's talked about that often. Um, the point about cis guys getting by a lot easier in life, um, this is what we refer to as cis male privilege. Um, privilege shouldn't be seen as a negative word, it just means by default you have certain advantages over someone who doesn't have that privilege. Um, and that's not to say that if you are a cis white guy, that your life will be easy. That's not what it means at all. It means there are, what it does mean is there are certain assumptions made about you or certain societal um, things that make other things potentially a lot easier for you. Um, so when you are a trans woman in particular, you do tend to give up the cis male privilege uh, that comes with being a cis man. Um, and that's definitely something that you need to take in mind when you're transitioning. People will start to see you differently. Um, equally, there may be pressures that you had put on you as a... while you were, I guess, presenting male, um, that you will be relieved for them to come off. Um, one of the big ones for me when I started transitioning is I felt a lot more easily able to be emotional. Um, for all that it's worth, I don't hold any grudges against people for this, but when I was presenting male before I knew I was trans, I had a very difficult time being emotional. Um, I think in part due to the depression that I was slipping into, but also in part due to the pressures particular members of my family and friend group put on me. Um, as a guy, often you have to be stoic and um, and aggressive and hardy and um, this is what's called toxic masculinity is the idea that all guys have to be aggressive and hardy and um, a very manly man I know that's a bit of a sort of that's a bit tautological but um, there's, there's this idea that you have to be a certain way as a guy and often that trends towards being an asshole, to put it shortly. Uh, can we... Let's wait for this one to pass. That truck is stopping and letting us on. Thank you kindly. So... The... Um, so yeah, there are there is some societal and cultural pressure to act in a certain way as a guy, um, and the most extreme of that is the sort of toxic stereotype of um, big muscles, strong, and will throw a punch before talking to someone, and it's a sort of very toxic, aggressive, I guess, idealized in 
some sense of the word, not in that they are ideal, but in society idealizes them and says this is what we want, which is frankly bullshit. No one wants everyone to be an asshole. It's just, it doesn't work. Um, so, I think stripping back all of those assumptions, uh, when you come out as a trans woman in particular, it can be rewarding and freeing. And I know it was for me, I felt, like I said, I felt I could be more emotional. Um, I felt like I'd be less judged for things I enjoyed. Um, so there is that side to it, but there is also the side where you give up a lot of privileges. Um, like as a cis guy and a cis white guy, um, which is the perspective I'm coming from, as that especially, you, you are assumed the default. You are the average person um, in society. Um, at least as society sees it. So there are a lot of assumptions made about you that can help you advance further and quicker than other people who do not have these assumptions made about them. Um, you are presumed to be stronger, you are presumed to be more capable of physical labor, you are presumed to be more capable of intellect intellectualism, I guess. Um, you are perceived as naturally more intelligent, you are perceived as... Uh, there, there are lots of examples of things people assume it about you just because you are a white guy. You're generally perceived to be more trustworthy. Um, so you, you do give up a lot of privilege when you start to transition. Um, so it is an important point to touch on definitely because uh, it's it's something that can often go unnoticed um, and unconsidered because things do become a lot more difficult because of that when you when you come out and when you give up that privilege. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else in particular that I want to say about this. Uh, I'm not sure there is, but um, thank you again to Jamie for asking the question. Um, it was definitely something I'm happy to discuss and happy to talk about because I feel like it's not talked about en enough, oftentimes. Um, this giving up of privilege and also the considerations into future dating. Um, I think that one's talked about more than the privileges, but it's still talking is always good. Uh, I need to work out exactly where I'm going here. Um, okay, I think I'm in the right lane. I don't want to turn off here, that's all I need to know. Okay, it adds an extra lane for turning off, so we're fine. And we should be able to get past this cement mixer before our turning. So, um, yeah, thank you again to Jamie for submitting her question. Um, for the last part of this episode, I wanted to talk a little bit about the future of this series. Um, this is going to be the last regular episode of the series until I get more topic suggestions that I want to talk about or um, more questions to answer. Um, I will still be making and uploading videos, um, but I think they're going to be less heavily focused on trans issues and they're just going to be more gameplay videos. Um, and as such will be in a different playlist. I will put everything in an entirely 
new playlist which is every trucking video uh, so that you can watch the progress of the series from start to finish um, but yeah for the I think moving forwards the sort of average episode will be just gameplay and me rambling about anything I feel like rambling that day um, rather than specific topics or um, or specific dis discussions that I want to have um, just because it's getting a bit harder now we've done 10 episodes of this it's getting a little bit harder to find new topics okay we need to take a wide route in here um, so yeah the format will change slightly and there'll be a new playlist for uh, where does it want me to oh lord no I'm not doing that um, there'll be a new playlist to for just the ones where it's gameplay but there will be a second new playlist which includes every tracking video so that people can watch them all in order if they want um, and in the other series videos might go on longer they might I might split journeys up uh, across multiple videos if they're longer um, so yeah it's going to change a bit from here but feel free to continue submitting topics uh, if I get a good topic in the submissions I'll make a special episode and talk about it and we'll have more episodes of this um, thank you all for your support for this series it's been fantastic that people have been providing feedback and asking questions and giving me their opinions as well uh, it's been brilliant to see that that people have wanted to engage with this um, and thank you to Randall and Jamie again for asking questions for this series that's um, been really positive to be able to answer those um, I think that's us done so we are now on fifty six thousand uh, dollars we're still saving up to buy a truck where are the truck dealers we can go to one of these here just quickly there's one in Flagstaff we know of the Kenworth one in Phoenix so if we visit the dealer quickly um, actually not yet I'm going to save the game and then do that uh, save just so that I can load from this save and we haven't advanced any time overwrite the older save uh, truck dealers yes so the cheapest one is one hundred and thirteen thousand dollars and then they get more and more expensive from there and you have to be higher and higher levels to buy them Um, so yeah these are the sorts of trucks you can buy at higher levels um, this is probably the one we're getting because it's cheap or cheaper um, I might see in the early episodes of this new series if I can discover a Peterbilt um, truck dealer as well so that we have options um, but yeah, that's going to do it for this episode of Trans Trucking Talk. Thank you all for watching and see you next time. Bye.